Good evening and welcome to the May 14th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Can we have the roll, please? Tyler Robinson. Here. Mitzi Barker. Here. Greg Streich. Here. Danielle Bailey. Here. Jared Gardner. Here. Andre Spinelli. Here. Brian Looney. Here. Seth Anderson. Here. John Springs. Been excused. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll just note um, that case 201832 on Diamond Eat LLC has been uh, postponed indefinitely. If anyone was here uh, interested in that uh, West Diamond development project. Um, disclosures, any disclosures on either of the two items that we'll be hearing this evening? Jared? Uh, none. Mr. Looney? And none here. No Mr. disclosures. Craig. None. Andre? Um, I will just disclose that I do um, occasionally purchase gravel from the Klutna Services. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mitzi? Nothing to disclose. Seth? None. Um, I'd like to disclose uh, in the matter of uh, the conditional use permit with uh, Klutna Services, Inc., uh, we, we do have uh, my company, Cook Inlet Housing Authority, has a contract with the Klutna to manage our commercial properties or property managers on our commercial properties. So I wanted to disclose that and would appreciate if someone could run me through the conflict standards. you mind doing that, Danielle? Um, do you have a substantial part of the present action? No. One that varies directly and substantially with the outcome? Uh, no. Any immediate and known or conjectural and dependent on factors beyond the body's action? No. Significant monetary interest? No. Uh, generally possessed by a large group or only by the individual? No. All right. Thank you. Anything? So, Ms. Move for you to participate. That's seconded by Mr. Louie. Okay. And call the question. I'm sorry, I just wanted, I had a question <clears throat> regarding these, just to confirm my understanding of these. The, the final question that was asked, whether the interest is generally possessed by a large group or only by an individual, what was the answer to that? I think you said no. And I, I said no. Um, I don't have any knowledge of this particular case that, that would otherwise not be. I think that's the, the, the intent of that question. Sure. Um, and I'm seeing this here with the, for the first time this evening. Okay. Yeah, I've got no. I just wanted to. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, there is uh, one item on the consent agenda. I'd like a, a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Strike, Ms. Barker. Um, anyone wishing to pull that consent agenda item? And that is uh, a review and recommendation by us to the assembly for a uh, transfer of land from Anchorage Parks to MLNP for an expansion of a substation at Goose Lake Park. So this is our either uh, positive recommendation uh, and anything else we'd like the assembly to consider. Anyone wishing to pull that item? No? Any objection to uh, approving that item? Hearing none, that, that uh, case 2018-63 is approved. Thank you. I do have a question, um, uh, not about that, but about okay. uh, Commissioner Spinelli's uh, um, disclosure. Were okay. we going to discuss that? Um, yes, please. Uh, do it now? Let's do it or? now, yeah. Okay. Actually, I'll, I'll go through them if you want. Yeah, you'd like to read, read through this specifically and, and direct him to participate or not. Thank you, Mr. Looney. So, uh, Commissioner Smelly, uh, as uh, your disclosure, is a substantial part of the uh, present action? Uh, or no. Okay. Uh, one that varies directly or substantially with the outcome? No. Immediate and known or conjectural or dependent on factors beyond the body's action? No. Significantly monetarily? No. And generally possessed by a large group or only by the individuals? Um, generally possessed by a large group, I, I, I believe. I guess I don't understand that. What's, 
<laughs> you want to <try>? um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I think the question is, if you, there is an interest, is it by a large group or by an individual? And since you have stated that you don't have a large interest, oh, yeah, that question no. is kind of irrelevant. But if you want to specify that your limited interest yeah. is of a general group nature. I was like, well, yeah, lots of people buy gravel from them. <laughs> <laughs> I move to direct uh, Commissioner Spelling to part participate in the class in, in that case. Thank you. So, okay. So let's back those out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Are you okay? Seconded by Mr. Strike, but thank you, Mitzi, as well. Um, okay, please vote. Okay. You are directed to participate on this, the case, which is before us um, right now. So before we get going, um, this will be a public hearing uh, item, and the procedure by which the public may speak to the commission is after staff presentation is completed on public hearing items, I'll ask for public testimony on the issue. Persons who wish to testify will follow the time limits established in the Commission Rules of Procedure. Petitioners, including his or her representatives, have 10 minutes. Representatives of groups, community councils, and PTAs, five minutes. Individuals, three minutes. When your testimony is complete, you may be asked questions by the Commission. You may only testify once on any issue unless questioned by the Commission. An individual may have appeal rights relating to any action the Planning and Zoning Commission takes except Commission recommendations to the Assembly, which are not appealable. Appeals must be filed with the Clerk's Office within 20 days after approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission of the resolution, which is the Commission's final decision. A fee for the appeal is required at the time of filing. So, next case is 2018-44, Clutin Services, Inc., an amendment to a previously approved conditional use permit to add a portion of Tract 39 Eagle River Powder Reserve um, for a natural resource extraction. Could we get the staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Track 37 was approved for a natural resource extraction by the Planning and Zoning Commission um, last year with Resolution 2017-006. Um, so far, uh, the crossing over the railroad tracks has not been built. The proposed conditional use uh, before you tonight will add two portions of Track 39 to this approval for Track 37. The two portions are the Site A and Site B, and they contain approximately 17 acres. Um, the addition, this amendment to the um, previously approved conditional use uh, will not change the number of uh, truck trips uh, under the existing approval, will not change the hours of operation. It's just adding these two um, sites to the original approval. Uh, no public comments were received, and the community councils did not um, uh, comment. Um, the department finds that the approval criteria for this amendment um, is uh, met and recommends approval of this amendment subject to conditions one through three on pages seven and eight of your packets. Um, so this project got approval last year by this body. They haven't started work on, they have started work on the conditions of approval, but they haven't provided that information to the planning department yet. And, of course, they have not started any work on the property yet. Um, this uh, recommendation of approval for this amendment um, is uh, subject to three conditions. The third one says approving this amendment will make it all subject to conditions 1 through 15 of the previous approval. That was the cleaner way of handling this rather than trying to restate all the same conditions of approval all over again. Um, be happy to answer any questions, and your, your uh, petitioner is here as well. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, Mr. Strike. Thank you to the staff through the chair. Uh, under the proposal, second paragraph, last sentence, when public road building projects require delivery of aggregate at night, then truck hauling of materials allowed 24 hours per day, seven days per week. Is that a new addition to the cup? I'm, I'm not recalling that one. Previously. Just, just so I'm clear, where, where are you reading that specifically, page, Mr. Strike? Page two, second paragraph, last, last sentence. Okay. Um, through the chair, uh, the, 
the original approval uh, allowed for 24-hour operations um, for these public road projects that require um, aggregate to be delivered um, at nighttime. Uh, so, yeah, the answer to your question is yes, that was previously approved. This um, makes no change to the original approval, the previous approval. I, I guess my question would be public road building projects that require delivery of aggregate at night. I, I don't know of any that require it other than the schedule that the contractor may use necessitates it. So I don't know that the contract itself requires aggregate delivery, but the, again, the schedule on the road public road projects necessitate it. So which prevails, a necessitation because of the builder's schedule or a written document in the public road um, spec that stipulates a requirement? You, um, you have some specialized knowledge, Mr. Strike, of this. I, I, I'm just sort of have a simple understanding that um, they have to uh, deliver um, uh, gravel from this site um, in the middle of the night, and uh, it's written up to approve it that way. Um, that necessitate versus require, can you direct that question to the applicant? Okay. Yeah, and I'll just, just to be clear, it's, it's, if you go to condition number six is where it talks about specifically, the, the, the condition says it's allowed when it's related to a DOT road project. So that's, that's what we're saying, page 43. Or that's what we've said previously. And then it also adds a clause, unless otherwise determined by the Department of Health and Human Services, which is itself an interesting statement. Okay, there's the clarification that's needed. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Barker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a point of clarification. It's my understanding that this amendment would not change the um, frequency or the volume of the heavy vehicular traffic. That's exactly right, Ms. Barker. Thank you. Um, and I guess this is for staff. I will ask the petitioner as well. But you know, track 39 stretches all the way down to to uh, towards the existing neighborhood. So, in theory, could they continue this work kind of all the way south there? And, and, and you're shaking your head, no. Uh, no, no, Mr. Chair. Uh, it, it's uh, subject to the plans in this packet uh, specifically. They can't um, creep anywhere outside of the approved area. They could come back and, uh, and amend the conditional use. It would be a public hearing. Uh, yeah, the, the Planning and Zoning Commission would have to approve any amendment. At some point, would you treat the conditional use differently the closer this work got to the neighborhood? No. Um, so uh, the zoning requires a conditional use permit um, when you do natural resources extraction, and um, these uh, amendments are uh, public hearings. Um, uh, there is a provision in code that allows for minor amendments to be approved by our office um, through an administrative review. Um, that's uh, not something that comes as a public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission, but that is, uh, has some very strict four criteria it's uh, changes in, uh, you know, landscaping um, uh, uh, choices, uh, clarification to um, existing text in the application, um, uh, you know, uh, changes that um, have no effect on um, uh, circulation. There's four criteria, but it's very tight that it wouldn't be for um, any sort of expansion of the uh, natural resource extraction. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gardner and then Ms. Barker. <clears throat> I had a couple of questions about the 24-hour operations. One, I just wanted to confirm my understanding that on those occasions where operations would extend beyond the 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday, that is limited to just the filling of trucks and the, the transport of the aggregate. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And then and then also I noticed in the application there's a reference to in, in the um, – section discussing hours of operation, there's a reference to um, before going into the 24-hour operation that a Klutna would be required to notice the community. I suppose I read that to mean provide notice to the community. And I was wondering if there was any discussion about that the first time around when these original conditions were put in place, because I don't see any reference to providing notice um, in these conditions, and if that was something that was, I don't know, came up in any capacity before. 
Um, yes. Uh, so with natural resource extractions, we've sort of developed this um, standard set of conditions of approval to make sure all of the important points of, of this type of um, project are covered. And um, Eclutin has experience in another site um, that uh, is nearing completion um, of doing 24-hour operations for um, uh, road projects. And so that sort of broke um, trail for other projects like this one that have had to uh, follow the same rules that were developed under the Eclutna Site 1 case um, near Eclutna Village. Okay. So is there, was there, I guess in this case, was there a discussion or an intent to have a requirement that notice be provided to the community before operations oh. extend into the, through the night? Um, so uh, that's a requirement of the previous case. And um, all of those conditions of approval are applicable to um, this site. Okay. Well, I, so where I guess I didn't I didn't you, see that requirement in. You the, don't see it in the conditions. In the, the conditions requirement. from the previous case, is it in here somewhere? Right. I guess I don't see it in paragraph six, so maybe it's somewhere else. <laughs> Unless it's part of the noise control under chapter fifteen and seventy. And I don't know if anyone else that was here for this prior case, if that was a, something that was discussed. I don't remember discussing it, but that doesn't mean we didn't. Um, through the chair, um, Mr. Gardner, yeah, I don't see a conditional approval requiring uh, notice of uh, the public, and I think that was because um, this, uh, the location of this is, um, more than 2,000 feet from the nearest um, residential house. Um, but uh, I didn't work on the, uh, the last year's case that was Sharon Ferguson's. Um, this might be a good question uh, for uh, the applicant. She might recall why um, uh, there, there's, uh, there's not notification um, to the neighbors, which the distance is pretty significant, um, at this site. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Ms. Barker. Actually, I think you may have answered the question because I'm recalling a not too long ago action in which we approved more residential development than what is shown here on the would be the northeast side of the North Eagle River access. Oh, I, I don't understand the question, Ms. Barker. That's okay. I'm recalling that in the relatively recent past, we did have an action concerning further residential development in a subdivision that is northeast of what is shown here adjacent to a Clutena Park Drive. Yeah, the Powder Reserve um, is building homes in there. Uh, yeah, that's what and, I mean. I've been noting. That there was a conditional that. use that I worked on uh, a little while ago about a, a utility substation, too. Yeah. Um, that, but I, yeah. So, in fact, there may be residential development a little closer to the proposed site here than what seems to be apparent from the map. This is all that's there now. This is the plan for the future. Right. This is, I know this is all that's there, but I've, yeah, anyway. Whether any uh, homes have been built closer to um, this natural resource extraction site um, since the photo photograph is dated on this, um, that might be a good question for um, the property owner, Klutna, um, who's also the applicant um, in this natural resource extraction. Thank you. I was just you know, doing a roundabout way to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. On uh, the previous conditions of approval, condition number five was a uh, have a wetland mapping, and was it implied that the wetland mapping would be used for something, or that it's just for knowledge of where the wetland boundaries are? Um. Well, um, you know the. Natural resource extraction in the vicinity of wetlands would require wetlands de delineation to be reviewed by the watershed management services. Uh, it would be sort of part of their approval process. Uh, I'm not sure if there's kind of like a missing phrase in this that it's kind of dangling there. Some, I, I, I just didn't do the research on this original approval. Um, yeah. I guess that answers my question. I, it would. My inexperience leads me to 
ask the question to the rest of the board. Is it something that we want to clarify? To me, when I read it, I was like, well, what, what's the purpose of it? But um, it, was it implied or understood on what it's being used for? So the same, as written, the same thing would happen again? There, I mean, the first obvious question is, did, did that actually happen the last time it was approved? And, and, and we're saying that this would need to ha happen again upon this approval because it's a new site, right? Um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the, um, none of the conditions of approval have been met uh, or per the information on those has been provided to the planning department. And uh, when they do come in with those, we'll look for that information um, to be covered for the original approval plus these sites. There's no wetlands on these two sites. Okay. But I, I don't, um, we're not really, uh, it seems to me, uh, delving back into the original uh, case, um, just uh, looking at this amendment, whether or not it's appropriate to add these two No, I know, but, well, it. that's not, it's, it's true and it's not true. I mean, we're basically finding, the, we ha we're, we're making these same conditions on the new case, so these are the conditions. I think it's totally appropriate for us to look at them and make sure we understand them and, and you know, so I... We're going to go there if we need to. But. I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah. But I'm just telling you where the focus is. This, is this, I don't know if I answered your question, though, Seth, but is this, is this like stan, is standard stock c condition, this one, or is this specific to this site? I think that this one is specific to this site. However, some similar language could be on the approval for a pollutant site one because they have mm -hmm. um, uh, the, you know, the, um, the river or the creek there. I, you know, I, I, I'm pretty familiar with the Clutonus I1, but I can't recall um, this language because th the areas where they've worked have been so far away from water since the original approval. Okay. Mr. Gardner? Yeah, I forgot I had one other quick question. Sorry. <clears throat> Regarding the, the, um, the number of trips, the truck traffic, I guess, um, the, the report refers to 600 trips a day and, and um, I think in the application elsewhere, I saw the number 300. Is that difference just a matter of how you're counting the trips? I think so. Um, can you direct the question to uh, Ms. Uh, McNulty about uh, clarification on the number of truck trips? Um, yeah, I mean, I can I can do that. I, I guess I'm not I'm not specific. I don't I don't know that the specific number matters to me. I was just kind of asking about the difference between mm -hmm. the number in the report and the application. Since one is 600 and one is 300. We'll ask, we'll ask the applicant to confirm when they, when okay. they come up. Mr. Gardner, it, it may be a, a, a typo. Uh, it's, it's easy to uh, confuse. Sure. Uh, um, does a trip refer to one direction or um, okay. a uh, round trip? All right. Thanks. Mr. Strike. Thank you. And to the chair. I think one of the issues that we're seeing now with CUP, and we, we've seen this now in the past, is insurance assurances that previous conditions that have been met when there has been a renewal or a readdress of a CUP. And with that in mind, looking at condition number 11, I would, I'm going to ask the petitioner, but I want to run it by staff first. Would you have any objection or see any objection from your view in adding a point C to that condition that would read, since this is an annual um, report that's conducted, that we would then request a certification that all conditions of the CUP imposed have been fully complied with and adhered to? <laughs> now that would be a certification by the petitioner on that annual renewal on that annual report basis because right now they're just providing logs and updates on the material removed well um, it's a self-reported thing um, uh, how would you this this is a 10-year mm -hmm. conditional use permit right that we're now in we've, we've passed year one so now we've got nine years left they've yet to perform any of the program as of yet it was delayed or for whatever reason so my question would be having a I don't know what the system is in place with the city with your department that would identify that conditional use in limitations imposed or conditions imposed are being adhered to so I just like to see that the petitioner is doing an annual report that they certify that they are 
At least to, we have some teeth. At least we have something, you have something, we have something to go back on. To the chair, Mr. Strike, the last condition um, that is required to be met for all conditional uses is, is uh, for the petitioner to file a notice of zoning action. Um, and it's recorded against the property. Would it be appropriate to solve your issue um, if the petitioner included the notice of zoning action, uh, which is the last step, which certifies that all other steps previous to that have been met? Would it be appropriate that, that the petitioner provide that as part of their annual report? Yes. Okay. I think staff would support that as well. Okay. Thank you. And we'll let the petitioner address that when okay. they come forward. Thank you. I see no, no other commissioners in the queue. At this point, I'd like to uh, open the public hearing, starting with the petitioner's uh, presentation. I am Michelle McNulty with Dow. Uh, with me this evening is Curtis McQueen and Steve Conley with Aklutna. Um, as discussed, we are uh, amending a previously approved conditional use permit to include a 17-acre portion of Track 39. Um, after original approval of Track 37, Aklutna began to move forward with the design of the bridge that was going to cross over the rail, um, connecting what's known as uh, Track 38 or Site 4 to 37. Um, the cost came back considerably higher than had been expected, and Aklutna's board was not um, comfortable with putting forward that much money into the startup cost of, um, of, a, of a new development and had asked for alternatives to be explored. Until recently, the alternatives were fairly limited, um, and then they started to pursue some various conversations with the Alaska Railroad about the bridge, and um, due to some financial challenges that the railroad has happened, or recognizing they were open to discussing um, possibly opening up some of their land that could be mined out, there would be a revenue stream, and then also creating a flat surface that would allow for a conveyor system to be used in the interim um, to get the gravel from, from mining track 37. Um, and then would also open up areas for additional lay down areas for the railroad. Um, so that's pretty much Tract A will be the, the first, or area A of the larger track will be the first area that's mined to complete that flat surface. Um, and then that will be where they, they can make the connection on the conveyor to track 37. Um, a bridge may be constructed at a later time, um, but, but this would be the interim solution. Um, area B will also be left as a flattened area for the railroad. Um, and this could also supply needed gravel for the future phases of the powder reserve subdivision that are, is located to the east. Um, various alternatives of connecting areas A and B are being analyzed and include either reinstalling the bridge uh, where the railroad had their crossing um, between the two ponds or following along the spur that you see on the, the map or even going through track to, um, 40A, which would then keep the gravel trucks out of the, the existing neighborhoods. And we are currently working towards resolving the conditions of approval. Um, some of them had been put on hold while we were working out the solutions for the, the bridge, but we've been actively going um, back towards that. No op operations on track 37 or 39 will incur occur until all the resolutions have been um, resolved. At the last public meeting, the big issue was the traffic um, impact analysis. That memo has been um, completed. The analysis has been completed. It was submitted as of this morning to the Department of Transportation for their review. Um, the findings did show that during the worst case scenario of um, 300 trucks or 600 trips per day, so one trip being in, one trip being out, um, that, which is also a very infrequent occurrence of having that running at full capacity, but that it could create a slight increase in the delay at the southbound ramp. However, project traffic is not expected to increase the queuing lengths on either the um, northbound or the southbound um, ramps. And the queuing length is really the metric of review as when you start to get those queues up and they um, go on to the Glen Highway, they can create a safety problem. So that was the major concern that we wanted to make sure we wouldn't uh, be creating. 
also wanted to pr provide co clarification that we are requesting approval of asphalt fault hot batching on track 37 um, or track 39. It was very clear in 37, but it's, it wasn't as clear. We just wanted to make sure that you knew what you were approving. Um, the 24 hours of um, operations at site one, it was required to have the noticing. I do believe that Mr. McLaughlin is correct that it wasn't required at this site because of the distance. I don't think that Klutna would be opposed to um, notifying the adjacent neighborhoods that there was going to be activities. Um, they operated several of those instances at site one, which is adjacent to the native village of Klutna and also Thunderbird Falls, very close proximity. Um, and they had no incident of occurrence. So when that annual reporting, they actually had to include that as part of um, their report back. As far as including the notice of zoning action, we're fine with that. That's probably the best way to, to demonstrate that the conditions have been met. <clears throat> um, the question about condition number five and the mapping, um, I, I believe that is stock language. It's very typical. Um, I've, and it could be that most of the gravel extractions that I've worked on have been near wetlands, so it seems like something I've seen a lot. Um, for track 37, the mapping has been completed. We worked with Thede Tobish. Um, he had us go out there and had our wetland scientists go out and flag the areas. Areas A and B are both in, in uplands, so there likely won't be any um, flagging required, but it would probably be a good language to keep in there so that we can verify that with staff. It's, it's not an encumbrance as far as additional cost or time. It's something that we can just confirm with feeds, so I don't think that that's an unreasonable condition to keep on there. Um, we did attend the Eagle River Community Council. There was no comments. Um, I know it was an item of conversation at the Birchwood Community Council. Mike Curry from the Klutna Board had attended that meeting. Um, he explained kind of what the project entailed and, and there was no comments there either. And with that, I'd like to save my remaining time for rebuttal. You have just over four minutes. Uh, any questions for the petitioner before we um, ask for public testimony? Mr. Strike. Oh, thank you. Yeah. On, on the question I was asking staff regarding the bullet point for C for the additional certification, do you have any alternative language to insert in that, or no. is that an issue problem? No. no, I think including the notice of zoning action is the cleanest thing that we could provide. That's clear language, and it's something that is on the record and recorded against the property. So your C would be to include the notice of zoning action. Say that again. I think that's what we're saying is Correct, we yes, would say C in, in submittal of the notice of zoning action. Yeah. On each on each on each annual well, it's done report. once, right? Well, you do it. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm looking at I'm looking at the I'm looking for a certification of adherence to the conditional uses that are placed on the property acknowledged by the petitioner on an annual basis. This is a nine now nine year conditional use before us. So I guess, I, so there's some, there's two things. And so when you have the conditions of approval, some of the conditions of approval actually have kind of an action item that are completed that is one time deal, like submitting the site plan and they sign off and they say, okay, that's the site plan. And then we get that signed off. Other conditions of approval are kind of what we call operating procedures, making sure you maintain certain of hours of operation, um, filing the, the, the log, the annual log. Yeah. So I guess there's a are number, you there's wanting a number to, of items, right? So are you asking? Because so once we resolve all the conditions of approval that have an action item, then the last thing that staff does is that they provide us with a notice of zoning action that's then recorded against the property, and that is your certification that all of the conditions of approval have been met. Well, it, but it, are it, you? It, it, but it goes beyond that. At number eleven, beginning December, every December first and or after, the applicant shall submit an annual monitoring report to the planning department. Now that's a monitoring report. Now, there's a number of items built into the conditional use that, for example, um, they will adhere that a person on site has the authority to call the um, street sweeper. And I've been on seen many projects, and the, street, and the guy that's, quote, in control just says, you know, no, i I got to call somebody. No, you don't. I mean, all I'm looking for is a certification by the applicant when they submit their annual report that they state they are following the conditions imposed. So really just adding into the narrative of the request that 
maybe point for point that those op operational items are being followed. I don't care that you go point for point that you certify that you are adhering to the conditions, all of them. And, you know, whether or not the city is going out there and inspecting to ensure that they're all being adhered to or ensuring that the public has filed complaints and nothing's being followed up on, all these become aggregate in whether or not the conditional use permit has been adhered to. So here's an opportunity on an annual basis that the petitioner then therefore certifies he either is or isn't compliant. I'm just asking for a self-certification by the applicant, hopefully that they're compliant. I think then just an added line that says that in addition to the notice of zoning action, a statement um, certifying or confirming that conditions of approval are being that, met would be a... That's fine. And okay. if we come out down the road later and there's a certain amount of complaints and we're all before us again, we can go back to that and say, you certified on year one, you certified on year two, you certified on year three, and all of a sudden you're not, you're not following the rules anymore. Yeah. And that you may be before the commission again or before somebody to... Um, figure out what's going on. But the public has to have some means or assurances that the conditions are being met and followed and adhered to and being followed up by the city. By the Because once it passes this body and passes the assembly, we're, we're removed. Yep, understood. Okay, thank you. Mr. McLaughlin. Ms. McNulty, um, I was just jotting down uh, some notes during the discussion about adding, uh, sort of going back and amending the previous uh, conditional use approval and, and adding the wording that uh, Mr. Strike wanted. And I just wanted to run it by you, uh, just an idea. This is really draft form, but if the department's recommending approval subject to one, uh, 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 one through three, if we added a new four that said amend section B11 of resolution 2017-006 to add a requirement to state that all of the conditions of approval continue to be met. Um, yeah. Is there, just in the hearing of that, is there an issue for the applicant or? Uh, no, that sounds like good language. We, that's, that's something that, you know, for the benefit of the commission, that that's something that we could uh, refer to, um, it, it, it would be doable. Um, and then we'd have to insist that the applicant uh, um, provided that certification in their annual report. Um, it could be done. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Okay, you have about four minutes and 13 seconds for rebuttal. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Curtis McQueen including a great questions. I just want to hit a couple high points because I really appreciate that. Uh, Wait, I, think okay, go ahead. I was just going to add yep. Powder Ridge, uh, the neighborhood was a gravel extraction site. That was a that's it became a neighborhood after that. Wetlands were on the record for conservation easements. People know Eklutna with wetlands, and we do um, participate in the homeowners association. So we go above and beyond communicating with the neighborhood. And as far as the closest house, it'll probably be um, 15 to 20 years before we're way down on that backside where this extraction site will be. So it's quite a distance. I just wanted to clarify that because I thought they were great questions. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite members of the public down to testify on this case. This is a conditional use approval. And just to clarify what um, Mr. Strike said, this this is the approval. It does not go on to the assembly. So this is the, the approval is is what we're doing here this evening. Anyone wishing to testify? Okay. Yeah, yeah you need to come up and, and speak into the mic and, and just uh, state your name for the, for the record, too. Uh, hi, my name is Michelle Inman. I live in the Powder Ridge neighborhood, and I just had a question. How close will it be to the neighborhood? Because we live off of uh, Rosser Drive, which is close. It looks like the line is, you know, right up to our neighborhood. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, are all the trees going to be knocked down? Like, what, no. what does that look like? Um, it's about 2,000 feet. And actually, do you want to? Oh, okay. So this is just. Yeah, I'll get it. So this is two areas of the Oh, okay. 
Michelle, can, can you, the other Michelle, can you, your last name, just so we have it on the record? Could you just spell your last name? Inman, I-N-M-A-N. Thank you very much. Did, did you get your question answered? Is that satisfactory to you? Yes. Anything else you'd like, like to say? No. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify? Okay. Uh, yeah, you get three and a half minutes because Curtis took a few more seconds from you. Um, I just thank everybody for your time and uh, for Mr. McLaughlin for coming up with the revised language on short notice. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, in the matter of case 2018-44, an amendment to a conditional use for natural resource extraction, uh, what's the will of the body? Mr. Strike. In the matter of case number 2018-0044 for the Eagle, um, amendment to the conditional use for natural resource extraction, move for approval with the conditions as set forth, the three conditions as set forth by the, by the staff. Will we do the amendment then afterwards? If you'd like, yeah. So you I'm want going to go ahead and throw in the okay. amendment now go as ahead. part of the main body of the motion, and that was to amend conditions to add to the original conditions as set forth in the resolution 2017-006 condition and add 11C to the conditions. And I'm not going to profess to verbatim the language that you used, but I appreciate the language the staff put forth through the consensus. If you could read that so for the record. So could we get the language from Francis before I ask for a second on that? So, and, and just to be clear, it would show up as, an, as a condition number four, amending item um, B11 uh, to add C to say what exactly, Francis? To, uh, a requirement to state that all of the conditions of approval continue to be met. Okay. Is there a second on that motion? Thank you, Mr. Looney. So what you have before you is the staff recommendations with the addition of some language that would uh, modify 11C um, to basically have the um, applicant in an annual reporting basis um, acknowledge or certify that they continue to meet all of the conditions associated with the conditional use permit. Mr. Strike, would you like to speak to your, okay, I got Ms. Bailey in unless you'd like to speak. I to would. Um, I want to thank the petitioner. I think they've done a great job uh, in the past, in the present, and ideally in the future in their development proceedings and how they're going. I understand the economic concerns and making the adjustments as needed. I think it is apparent by the number of um, not petitioner, but the we, we had very few. We had one public testimony um, as compared to the previous um, testimonies in the past. Uh, I would like to think that that's a result of the um, proactive involvement that you and your company has taken. So again, appreciate that as well. Um, I think it's a project that, as you come before us, if there's anything that this commission can do to um, assist, take notice of, are there areas of, um, we're always looking for areas where regulations and so forth are impeding on our on company's ability to do, do work and proceed with development. So, again, I want to thank the petitioner for that involvement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strike. Ms. Bailey. I am going to uh, move to approve the motion. A um, couple things that uh, kind of back up that was, first I noticed that in our packet there was only one department objection. However, that objection was met by one of the original conditions of approval under condition 4F, and so that satisfied um, my interest in that area. Also, I'd like to note that there are no public comments received and that um, at the meeting tonight there was only one pop, uh, piece of testimony raising a question, but they seem to be satisfied that their area was enough separate. Um, additionally, I would note that based on the uh, pack from staff that this will not negatively impact any streams or drainage ways. Um, and 
that it also um, is about 2,000 feet from the nearest residential area and that um, I find find that it won't have any negative environmental pollution standards since they will um, comply with the DHHS noise regulations as well as the dust mitigation plan that they'll be submitting. Um, and essentially for the same reasons that we approved the first one, I found that this one meets those recommendations as well. And so those are the reasons that I'm going to uh, vote in favor of this motion. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Ms. Barker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will also be supporting the motion. Um, I find that the, the petitioner has worked with the, the owner of the natural resource to come up with an alternative plan that adjusts for certain economic conditions that are affecting the railroad and the ability to have the original bridge design and to make use of an alternate system. But almost more importantly um, is the fact that this amendment doesn't result in any change in the, uh, the amount or type of the vehicular traffic that will be coming to and from the site. Thank you, Ms. Barker. And I, I would only add, um, I'll also be supporting the motion um, that I heard some conversation about notice to the general public. Um, we did not add a specific condition to that effect, but the petitioner did um, indicate that they participate in the homeowners association, and that seems like an appropriate place to have that sort of ongoing communication take place. Um, so with that, I'd like uh, to call the vote. This conditional use permit is approved. Thank you. We need to take action. Okay, so I'm going to need on case uh, 2018 a motion to postpone it indefinitely. Thank you, Ms. Barker, seconded by Ms. Bailey. Any objection to that item being postponed indefinitely? Hearing none, it is postponed. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn unless there's anything else that anyone wishes to talk about. No, that's a motion for Mr. Strike. Can I get a second? Any objection? This meeting's adjourned. Reminder, we do not have the uh, first June meeting. <laughs>